up, Philly? What's up? Hey! Episode 3.5. We just did episode 3 yesterday, but of course, Hextall keeps us on our toes. And we were just complaining about how it's boring, but Hextall fixed that right away. Yeah, something happened yesterday, so just let's a little something. jump right into it. So the uh, big news, of course, that we want to talk about is Jake Voracek being locked up for 8 years, $66 million. And this contract also does not include an NMC or an NTC. Holmgren was nowhere near this trade. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth, <laughs> and I'm sure out of the mouths of a lot of uh, collective Flyers fans. <laughs> All right, so we got Jake back again. Of course, last season uh, tied for uh, fourth overall in points with 81. He was second in assists with 59. Yeah, I mean, he put some of his best work out uh, last season, and I think it's only going to get better. And because this deal has been made, uh, I will say it again. Our fondest, fondest, and warmest thank you to the Columbus Blue Jackets for sending (laughs) us Jake Voracek in return for Jeff Carter. It's very much appreciated. And you know that trade, you look back at it, it happened, what, 2011? Yeah. Um, We also got another first-round pick in that draft who was just signed to an extension earlier this week in Sean Couturier. And also, Nick Cousins was part of that deal as well, because he ended up being the uh, third-round pick that we got from Columbus. So, uh, yes, thank you very much, Blue Jackets. A few years later, when you look back on those deals, it's like, man, the Flyers really did make out like bandits. That is the one thing I will give Holmgren credit for, that trade right there. Sure. Genius. So Jake Voracek extended for another eight years in Philadelphia. Jake the Snake and uh, going to be playing alongside with Giroux for a while as the uh, one-two duo of the team. And all the reactions uh, to it, for the most part, from Flyers fans have been really positive. Most of the people on Reddit Flyers are extremely happy about it. Lots of woos. Well, of course. You're getting one of the best players in the league locked up for uh, eight more years, really nine more years, because he's still uh, under contract for this year. So So we put it out there to share your thoughts and opinions on uh, the Voracek extension. How do you feel about it? And got to give a shout out right now to 87 of Hearts uh, Reddit username on Reddit Flyers. He said his reaction can best be expressed by a unicorn farting rainbows. (laughs) I'm reading that right now and that's really the best way to so there you go now overall now how do you feel about this extension because i'll say this much dude you called that back in episode two where you said you think he's going to be pretty much right on par with claude Giroux as how much he's making per year and for how many years well you look at the production that he's put up the past couple years 10th overall in scoring in the nhl over the last three years so he's got to get the same type of money as Giroux. yeah i mean well that's why i said yes you said eight years seven eight years around that area and for pretty much the dollar amount you're pretty much right on it and you know looking it over i have absolutely no problem with it for for one reason in specific uh he was going to become an unrestricted free agent at the end of uh this coming season and you know that if he did hit that free agent market somebody was going to dole out that kind of money for him. If he hit the market next summer, there's no doubt in my mind that he would get upwards of $9 million, possibly $10 million, depending on what he does you know, this upcoming season. And I think, of course, uh, he'll have another great season along with G on that top line. And, you know, I really think that him becoming the captain for the Czech Republic in the IAHF uh, World Championships, I really think that did a lot for him and for his confidence, too. What I liked about the press conference yesterday when they announced this deal was uh, Voracek talking about how, how much better that he thinks that both he and G can get going forward. I think we can get better because we got better, better every single year we played together so far. So I don't see the reason why we didn't get better. We just got to make sure that we uh, stay hard for 82 games because it's really important for the team and it's important for the organization. I could listen to Jake Voracek talking that accent all day. It's fantastic. <laughs> 
Well, let's hear what else he had to say about signing this contract. It's a pleasure to be part of you know, an organization like for hopefully minimum nine years, and uh, you know, hopefully we can get that Silver Stanley Cup to the Philly one day. Now, do you think that the duo of Giroux and Voracek, do you think they're that much of a powerhouse that that can become a reality in the near future? Because I know in the last episode, in episode three, we were talking about how many years until they become legitimate cup contenders. What are your thoughts on that, Ken? My opinion doesn't change. I still think they're, we're looking at 2017, 2018 as legitimate contenders. I'm still on the fence about if they're a playoff team going forward this year. I, I'm really not sure yet. I want to see how training camp plays out, but I think by 2017, 2018, absolutely cup contenders because you got all the young guys coming up to help out the D, and then you have these guys, you know, they're just entering their prime, and then you have Kaneki Lawton getting ready to come up. I think we just got to be patient this year and not be ready to jump off the ledge if they go on a losing streak at any point during the season. Also, talking about the future of the team, talking about this now, this core, the one-two punch of Claude Giroux and Jake Voracek, uh, talking about our brand new coach, Dave Haxtell. Uh, This story came out, which which is really, really interesting and also really awesome at the same time. Uh, apparently, Dave Haxtell, back in June, uh, he talked with Voracek on the phone, and then he traveled all the way to the Czech Republic just to have dinner with Jake Voracek and to talk with him about you know what he expects from him uh, as a player, what he expects from the team. And then he just stayed, like, the day and said, I'm heading back tomorrow. He flew all the way out to Voracek's homeland to take time to get to know him and talk to him. That is really dedication, first off, for a brand new job. He's showing that he really wants to do something special uh, with these players. Well, here's the thing with Haxtell. What has he done for the last 11 years? Gone out and recruited players. Right. So that's exactly what he was doing here. He wanted to get in front of Voracek. It only took a dinner, obviously, to come back to say to Hextall, all right, let's lock this guy up. Yeah, I cannot remember. Can you? When was the last time that the Flyers had an offseason this productive? I can't even think of it. That's an excellent or question. 2011? Yeah, it would have it been that Yeah, that year. But, we, I mean, that was one that just completely you know blindsided us that year. We weren't expecting all those trades to go down in 2011. Right. It seems like the future really is going to have something very special uh, when it comes to this team. I, I haven't felt this good about this team in probably, what, four or five years? Probably since 2010, last time Pronger played. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Now, uh, the big question I think that's come out of this this week, though, is what does this all mean for Braden Shen? Ron Hextall said he does not anticipate a new deal for Braden Shen until after next season. So they're going to ride it out for this year, no. see what happens, and um, not at all. What do you mean? I I think this is the the writing on the wall is there. Um, I think you look at Braden Shen. Uh, possibly being packaged with his brother at some point, and he will not be in a Flyers uniform next year. Shouting out to Reddit Flyers user Flipadelphia26, who uh, interacted with us on Reddit Flyers. Uh, He said that basically Brandon Saad, who just signed a big deal, uh, has produced virtually the exact same level as Baby Shen. They're roughly about the same age. Uh, Saad just rode a 23-goal and 53-point campaign into a six-year, $36 million deal. And Brandon Saad scored 17 goals, 47 points two seasons ago. And according to that, it's basically the exact same production as Braden Shen in his most recent season. Is Shen worth that? You'd have to probably ride it out for another season to see if he gets into a, in a natural position. We don't know if he's going to play center. We don't know if LeCavalier is going to be playing center. We don't know how many minutes of ice time he's going to have. We don't know what line Couturier is going to be playing on. We don't know. Who was part of the uh, Kings organization when they uh, traded Shen to the Flyers? Ron Hextall. So he got rid of him once. I don't think Hextall believes in him all that much. And also, um, Bravo Char, user Bravo Char, I think I'm saying that right, on uh, Reddit Flyers, says that, you know, waiting a year could pay off in a big way for Shen, either here in Philly or uh, due to the aforementioned logjam at center elsewhere. So your point is uh, definitely, definitely holds some water. Um, I say just 
Let the year ride it out, just like the same thing that you're doing with uh, Sam Gagne. See what happens. I think Shen stays with the team for the first part of the year, and then I think the trade deadline comes around, and that's when you'll see him move. I don't think Hextall is going to want to take the chance of possibly losing him next offseason for nothing. Only time will tell, but... What we do know for now, for certain, is that Jake Voracek locked up for eight years. We got Sean Couturier locked up. They're both going to be a part of this core. Let's rate it out. I would. What would you say in terms of this Voracek signing? Oh, absolutely. I'd go with an A-plus right now. Okay, I was going to say just an A, um, but you know what? Actually, I'll tell you this much. If you want to go ahead and take this whole week with the Couturier deal, I'll go ahead and I'll side with an A-plus on that. I'll go with do you one better. I'll go with the whole off season so far, A-plus. I can't really argue with that. I really can't. I I think a lot of people would actually agree with it, too. Going back to what we said earlier, I can't remember when we had an off season uh, this productive. Well, that'll do it for uh, episode 3.5. We'll be back next week with episode 4. And we got a whole bunch of uh, fun stuff lined up next week. Yes, we do. And maybe we'll have some news about our uh, Flyers-related prizes that we're going to give away to some listeners. Uh, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, listen to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, and also uh, what the Flyers' goal song should be for this uh, upcoming season. We have been working on a few, but also if uh, anyone out there that listens to the podcast if they'd like to try throwing their own together or maybe have a suggestion please feel free to submit it because uh, we would love anybody and everybody to be involved uh, with this so we'll have some great stuff coming up can't wait all right for andy rob i'm ken prell till next week see you have a good weekend Thanks for listening to the Philly Hockey Guys podcast. Follow us today on Twitter at Philly Hockey Guy. Subscribe on iTunes and check us out on SoundCloud and YouTube.